All right, today we're gonna to take a look at how to create uh, custom events inside of A-Frame and, um, and listen for those events on the scene. So whenever you're creating A-Frame components to be reused, um, you don't wanna to put too much um, application logic inside of your component. And the reason for that is you probably want to reuse these components later on down the road. Um, so for instance, if we take a look at our little application here, we have uh, some functionality where if I move this bottle over this uh, area here and set it on there, the, um, the area where I have placed this bottle um, has a uh, component that's called touching. And what it does is it tries to identify if, if anything is placed on it. Um, so if we take a look at what the uh, code for that looks like, it's called the touching component. And basically we're given a target. Um, so the, the, um, the component is this little uh, plane right here. And it has the touching uh, attribute on it and it's basically saying look out for any bottles that are placed on me and whenever you whenever um, we find a bottle that's placed on it we want to we want something to happen and what I have right now is just a console log so if we take a look at the console we can see a little init statement and if I take the bottle off you can see an ended statement so um, it's we can we know that it's working but right now we need to tie it into the rest of our application because we need to react to whenever changes, um, whenever bottles are placed on that plane. So to do that, we're going to use just regular JavaScript events. So a good way whenever you're building these applications is to um, have these components that are basically just in charge of um, doing a very simple thing and then notifying other notifying parent um, components of what's happening um, inside of its child components. Um, the benefit of doing that is that you can easily reuse these components in a bunch of applications and you're um, uh, removing a lot, you're separating the concerns of what this component is specifically supposed to do with what is the application logic um, for your app as a whole. Um, and that sounds very complicated, but basically it's just a way of saying fire events up and let your application um, uh, do, the, do the magic. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some JavaScript events um, to this component. So if we check the documentation on A-Frame under the JavaScript events and DOM APIs, um, there's a section called uh, events and listeners. And what the document, documentation says is that um, they have included an emit function on their elements to make it really easy to throw uh, JavaScript events. So the way that the pattern is, is if you want to create a JavaScript event, you just use the dot emit. You give um, your event a name, a unique name, and you can pass in any information along with it as well as saying whether you want this to um, this event to bubble up to its parents, which typically you would probably say yes. All right, so let's try it out. So we're, um, we're here in our switch statement, and it says, is this item touching? If it is, we're going to create a new event. We're going to emit this event, and to get access inside of your A-frame component to the actual element, it's this dot L. So this dot EL will give you um, the exact uh, DOM node. And then you can access the emit function. So we're going to name our event. We're gonna to say touching dash initiated. Uh, for now, let's just pass in, let's not pass in any detail for now. And we're going to specify true for that we want it to bubble up. We're going to copy that and under false, we're going to change this to touching ended. 
So we've just basically created two uh, JavaScript events here. Um, and let's go back here and we'll refresh the page and we can actually see if we have created these events by going to elements and then we'll search for an element that's using this. So as you can see the this bottle here it says touching and if we look in event listeners hopefully we'll see it listed. Doesn't look like it. Maybe we have to use it first. Let's uh, let's try that. So let's try listening for this event. So what I'm going to do is at the top level of my app, I'm going to um, listen for the a dash scene tag uh, to be loaded. So as soon as it's loaded, I know that I can start working with it. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to place an event listener on this scene. And we're going to listen for touching initiated. And whenever that happens, we're just going to log the event. So um, if we recap where um, this is going to be placed on an element that is the child of our a dash scene tag. So if we look here, here's a, an entity that is using the touching component that is a child of the a dash scene. So basically any events that happen here, we want this tag to listen for them. So let's try it out. Go get a bottle and we'll place it on our table. And as you can see, here's our custom event. So we can see it says touching initiated. Um, there's no detail in there because we didn't specify any, but it does specify the, uh, the target, which is nice. So if we wanted to pass along some detailed information, let's say that we wanted to pass along the um, let's see the distance, the current distance. We'll say distance this dot distance, and we'll say target this dot target. So just you can really pass along anything that you wanted. Let's see if it works. I might have to refresh it again. Let's go get another bottle. And now if we look in our event, you can see that we have some detail. And uh, it doesn't look like that logic worked. Oh, it's this dot data, I believe. Because we're trying to get access to the data that's being passed along via our schema. Let's see if that worked. Yep, and as we can see, it's a distance of two, and we can see our um, target. So we'll just finish it off here by making another uh, event. Touching ended, so we can make sure that both of our events are working. Touching initiated and touching ended. Great. So now that we've um, separated those concerns, we can reuse this component in um, any of our different applications. And it will be up to um, this, what's known as a higher order component, um, that will be in charge of reacting to um, to perform some business business logic. Um, so we have a nice separation of, of concerns going on here. So um, hope that helped.